Welcome back to part three in how to make a sword fighting game on Roblox. So what we're going to do, we're going to continue by creating our game loop script so that we can see who's left in the game and we can crown a winner. Or if the timer runs out, then we can restart the game and award no points. So what we're going to do is we're just going to uh, jump out of the second last end here so that we have a final end at the bottom of our script and we're going to update the status value to get ready to play and then we're going to wait two seconds and we're going to start creating our game for loop. So it's going to be a for loop that counts down from whatever the game length is to zero going down in increments of one. So we can say for i and i is going to be the time left. Okay, so, so i equals going from game length. So however long the game is, because remember we set the variable game length at the top here. So from game length all the way down to zero going down in increments of minus one, do. And we've it's added another end for us. And the first thing we need to do is add a wait one because we're going down in increments of one each second. So we need to add a time delay of one second. So the, the i, the i value counts down every second. The next thing we want to do is we want to loop through every single player currently left in that table. So for i, comma, player in pairs, and then we're going to do the players table, PLRS, do, and then we've got another end here because we've got another for loop. We want to check to see if the player is still there. They haven't left yet. If player then character equals player dot character. If not character, so if there isn't a character, then they've probably left the game or something else has happened to their character. Else, if character find first child game tag so if they've got that game tag that i mentioned earlier that tells us that they're still in the game then we know that they are still alive so we can say print player.name dot dot because we're concatenating it together with uh, to, to be a string is still in the game so we're just printing out that the player is still in the game so that we can just see who's alive and who isn't so if they are still in the game, then we can carry on. We don't need to do anything to them. Else, we know that they are dead. Okay, so what we can do is we can remove them from the player's table. Just like we did earlier, we can say table.remove from the player's table at the position i. Because i is their current position. Um, in fact, let's just change this to an x. Uh, and change the x over here. So... In this for loop here, where we're looping through all players in the game, we'll use x as our counter, okay? Because we're already using i up here in our in our countdown for loop. So we don't really want to get confused. So we're just changing i to x because e uh, the i value, the counter value, can be anything, anything you want. It could be dog, it could be cat, it could be y, but we're calling it x uh, just because that's what I thought of quickly so what we're doing we're removing them from the table at their current position which is x and then uh, that's all that we need to to do so we'll just go back to this if statement here and we can do an else uh, table dot remove uh, and from the players table we can do the same thing uh, remove them from x again in case there isn't a player so they failed at the first if statement and then we can print player.name and then dot dot has been removed. And if you want, we can put this after the table.remove right here. So it's just printing that they've been removed from the table if they have died. Okay, so now that we've done that, just before our wait one, we can update the status value to say there are, and then we'll do a space because we're concatenating again, i dot dot seconds remaining and we're then going to say how many players are remaining so we can say dot dot and then we can say hashtag plrs so the hashtag for the table tells us how many players are left in that table players 
All right. So this is just going to tell us how long's left in the match and how many players are still fighting. So now that we've done this, we can get onto the actual checking to see if someone's won, whether the time has run down or whether nobody won. OK, because there's lots of different things that could happen. You know, they could fight each other at the same time and have the same amount of damage. And as if by some absolute magic look, they could kill each other at the same time. It's practically impossible, but, you know, we will still account for it anyway. So if the number of players is equal to one, then we know that there is one person standing. They've got the epic victory royale because they are the last person standing. We want to get that player. So if there's only one person left in the actual table, there can only be one person in that table and they will be at position number one. So we can say status.value equals the winner is, and then we can say dot dot PLRS, for the, so the players table, we're getting the first person, the first object in that table dot name. We're getting the name of that player and then what we're going to do is we're going to increment their books value. We're going to give them some books because they won the game. So we can do player, players one dot leader stats dot books dot value equals players one dot leader stats dot books dot value plus 25. In fact, let's make this a variable reward. And then at the top, we can say local reward equals 25. So reward is how many books they're going to get if they win the game. And I've just set this to 25. If you wanted to increase it to maybe 100, you can set it to 100, whatever you like. So it's the amount of currency they're going to get if they win. So we're taking the amount of books they currently have and we're setting it to whatever they currently have with their reward added on. So if I currently have 50 books and I win, this will be 50 and we're going to update that to 50 add 25 so that we're going to have 75 books. So now that someone's won, we can break out of this for loop because the game is over. We can break out from this game length loop and we can end the game. However, there are different things which could happen, different events, okay? So it's not that there's going to be one person left every time. People could go AFK and the game could last forever for the whole entire time limit. So we have to check to see if, well, hold on. We could check to see if there are no players left, as I said earlier. So else if number of players equals equals zero, then status dot value equals no buddy one okay and then we can break from this again and obviously if the timer runs down to zero that will break itself because the timer ran out but we could say else if i equals equals zero then status dot value equals time up and then we can break from that again so there we go we have done our game loop. It now covers all different possible events which would happen if one person's left, if nobody's left, or if the timer runs down, it will account for those different possibilities. So what we need to do now is we need to clean up the game when it's finished. So we can print end of game, and then we can loop through all of the players in the game, not in the players table, because there'll be nobody left. So we can say for i, comma, player, in pairs, game dot players colon get players do character equals player dot character if not character so if the character isn't there anymore then we're just going to ignore them else if they have got a character we're going to destroy their game tag if they have one and we're going to get rid of their sword from the from their backpack so we can say if if character have i spelled that right yep if character find first child game tag then character dot game tag colon destroy so we're just getting rid of that game tag because we don't want them to have more than one okay we only want them to have one and at the end of the game we will destroy it from their character and then we can say if character colon find first child sword then we're going to destroy that as well uh, sorry we want to do play dot backpack because they will probably have it in their backpack so if play dot backpack find first child sword then player dot backpack dot sword colon destroy and let's just do the same thing again for their character copy and paste this in case they have the sword equipped if character find first child sword then character dot sword destroy so we're just removing it from wherever it might be it could be in their character equipped they could have it in their backpack so we're just removing it uh, from 
all these different places. And then what we're going to do is we're going to destroy the cloned map from the game. Okay. And we're also going to want to respawn all the characters at the end of the game. So what we can do is we can say player colon load character. Now if you don't want to if you don't want everyone to respawn, then you can get rid of this line or comment it out. But I'm going to keep it in because it just respawns everyone and looks as if a new game is starting. So after we've destroyed the map, I'm just going to do a wait two seconds and we're going to set the status value to game ended. Okay, so that should be our game loop completely finished. Now, there might be a few bugs. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into a normal game, uh, into a test server, and we're going to test the game for any bugs. So let's go ahead and do that now. So we're going to just firstly save the game by pressing Control S or Command S. And then we're going to go into a test server. We're going to do two players and we're going to load it up. So let's load it up and see what happens. So if we do have some bugs, we will go and fix it. That's OK. Uh, it is likely that you will have bugs, so it's nothing to worry about. You just have to go and look into your script if you get one. Look at the line where it's telling you where it errored. And if you are getting an error, then you have to work out why that's happening. So there's lots of different places that can help you. You have the scripting helpers forum, lots of other places where you can go and you should be able to fix your code. But hopefully we won't have any bugs and we're just waiting for this test server to load up. OK, so we've got the server here. So let's just switch out for the for the, the players to be added into the game. So this is the server. Uh, so this is where we can see what's going on, we can see all of the players and these other two windows of studio which we're about to open, they are the uh, the two players which we have created this server with. So they're going to be added any time now. You can see that the status is currently set to waiting for enough players. Let's just drag each player over here and get rid of these boxes. So that's player one. And we have player two over here. You can see it says intermission and get ready to play. There are 49, 48 seconds remaining and two players left. We do have a little bit of delay here uh, because studio just take a while. So player two or player one, whoever it was, just won that match because of that. But if we just go and wait for the actual game to start up again, we have two players in, in the round now. And if we wait for the game to load, it says get ready to play. There are 50 seconds remaining and two players left, which is correct. You can see the timer is ticking down. Now let's go ahead and just test out our game for any bugs. Let's see if we're able to walk off the map. No, nope, we're not. We can't walk off the map. Uh, let's see if the swords work. Yep, the swords are working for me. And let's just wait for the timer to tick down all the way to zero. Okay, so time up. And game ended. So we all get teleported back to the lobby. Uh, it says intermission. And then we wait for another game to start. Nobody got awarded any books that round. Because nobody won. However, let's go and kill somebody. And actually see if we get the points. So it says there are 48 seconds remaining. And two players left. Now, one thing that is going to happen is... If we go over here and kill somebody... I don't think that the two players left is going to update straight away. Now, I think it's only going to update when the player down here respawns because they will be respawned and they won't have their player tag. There we go. So it said the winner is player two when the person respawned. So what we need to do uh, when, the, when we finish testing is we need to create a event so that when somebody dies then we will immediately remove their game tag and we can crown the winner. So now let's try and die at the same time. Now hopefully it should say that player 2 won, or player 1, whoever it was that died first. And there we go. You can see that everything seems to be working fine. So let's go back into studio, add that, that event which will run when the player dies so that we can immediately remove their game tag. And we should be good to go. So let's click on clean up and go back to our stats script because that's where we're going to create this event. 
We're going to have a humanoid died event, which runs when the player dies. And we're just going to, uh, we're going to make it so that the player has their game tag instantly removed. So let's go back into stats here and we can say player dot character added colon connect function character. Okay. The character parameter here, that's going to be the uh, character that we're working with and any characters that do uh, so any player that uh, is in the game whatever we do to the character we will do to the actual player so we're just using character as as like a, a dummy right now and anything that we, we write in here will happen to each player so we want to do character dot humanoid dot died colon connect function so let's have a look did i spell that wrong yes i did so whenever the person dies whenever somebody dies this event will run now the reason we're putting this inside a character added event is because we need to get their character and the only way to do that is to use character added and that will fire whenever the person respawns when their character is added back into the workspace so inside of there we're getting the humanoid and then we're doing an event on that humanoid waiting for them to die and when they do die we connect that to this function and this function is a block of code which will run whenever that happens. So what we want to do is we want to say if character colon find first child game tag, then character game tag colon destroy just like that. And then what we want to do is instantly reload their character so that they go back to the lobby straight away, so that we don't have to wait five seconds for them to respawn. And one last thing that we're going to do, a nice little bonus, is we're going to create a little kill feed that shows when somebody's killed someone and it will say in the GUI at the top, player one killed player two. To do that, we're going to use a feature in this specific sword. Now, if you're using a different sword, this isn't going to work. So you can still add it in, but it probably won't work. You'll need to code it into your sword yourself. But the sword which I'll put into the description does have this feature and I'll show you it now. So in the resources module script, in player damager, you can see that whenever somebody gets damaged, we create a tag called creator. And the value of that tag is the player that killed that player or damaged them. So when they do die, we can look at this creator tag in their player and we can update the status to say that the value of that creator tag killed the player that died. So we can say if character.humanoid and character.humanoid find first child creator because the creator tag is actually going into the humanoid as you can see it's being parented into the humanoid here then we can say game dot replicate to storage dot status dot value equals to string we need to convert this to a string it's because the creator value is it's it's actually the player object it's not actually the name of the player so we can say character dot humanoid dot creator dot value and then we can say dot dot actually it is the player's name i believe uh do, 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 do. yes it is it is the player's name so we're concatenating it together and we just want to make sure that it is a string so we can say dot dot killed with spaces in between because we're concatenating and we say dot dot player dot name and then if we go and test this out our kill feed should be working so what i'm going to do is we're going to uh, load up another local server now because it took ages last time to load up i'm going to pause the video and restart it when we're loaded up okay i just joined the game you can see it says intermission it says get ready to play and for some reason i cannot move i think this is a roblox um issue yep there we go so it says there are 39 seconds remaining two players left so let's go ahead and kill this person okay there we go and it said the game ended intermission and i got 25 bucks so if we wait for another game to start get ready to play you can see that the animations don't work for me that's because i haven't actually used them um but you can download the animations i think i will leave a link to 
a dev forum post on how to do that. Uh, so let's go ahead and try to get a second win on the bounce. Can we do it? Oh, no. Uh, but you can see it said that we got killed at the top with our kill feed. Try and look out for that in the future. So the kill feed's working and you can see that uh, it will show up that you have won instantly after because the game tag is instantly being destroyed. So have a look at the kill feed at the top. It says that I killed Magic Man. It doesn't pop up for very long, um, but that can be edited in the future if you want. I might remove the game ended and add a longer wait, just so that you can see the kill feed uh, and the status updates. But all in all, it's pretty good. You can see I've got 50 books. Uh, no, sorry, I haven't got 50 books. Naked right here has got 50 books. I've got 25 books. Uh, let's see, though, if we can run the timer down. Don't kill anyone testing the timer. So hopefully no one will kill me. Let's uh, let's have a look. I'll just pause this and speed it up. Okay, so there are five seconds remaining. Let's see what happens when the timer ticks down to zero. It says time up, game ended, nobody got any points, and the game restarts. So I've done a little bit more testing and I've discovered a few more bugs. Uh, one of the bugs is that sometimes you will spawn uh, in the map. So you're stuck in the map and sometimes you'll fall out of the map. So what we're going to do is we're going to just make the spawns a little bit higher uh, and what we're also going to do is we're also going to uh, fix another bug which I found which is that if you leave the game uh, when it's running it won't register that you left. So what we're going to do is we're just going to reset and I'll show you how to fix these bugs. But this is what's going to happen when they are fixed. If you wait for the game to start it will say get ready to play but you see that uh, one of the players is stuck in the map so we need to make sure that the players are teleported a little bit higher than the spawn so they don't get stuck so it says three players left and if i just ask someone to leave so we'll say magic leave what we want is for the number three at the top to change to a two which it does but at the moment without the fix it will stay at three so i'm going to show you how to fix that now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the main script and just on line 98 in the for loop here where we are checking to see if not character then we're going to say table.remove players x so make sure that's added in there and also what we're going to do to fix the spawn issues is we're going to go back to where we teleport the players to the spawn and we're just going to do uh, where we're setting the humanoid root part c-frame we're going to do plus c frame dot new. Uh, actually, we're going to do plus vector three dot new zero five zero. Okay, actually, let's make that uh, ten so that they are well above the the spawn. So that should fix both of the issues. And also here we've got the the kill feed. And let's go back to the main script at the end. Now let's just do a wait of about two seconds after the end of game just so that we can see who won before it ticks over to say game ended so let's go ahead and publish those changes and we'll get some more testers in to see if the issues are fixed okay so we're in the game and it says 24 seconds remaining and four players left uh, but there's one two three players left actually so let's go into the console and go back over here and see if there's any errors so it says there are four people still in the game. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Where's the last person? Hmm. Oh, there they are. They're hiding underneath a, uh, a cactus. So there are four people left. So that's okay. So let's just change this. Let's hide that. And let's wait for the next game to start. So there's one, two, three, four. There's five of us, I think. One, two, three, four. Yep. Uh, so let's have a look. Get ready to play. Five players left. Now let's see who kills first. So it should go down to four. Yep. And let's see who's going to die next. So still four players left. Let's see if we can kill some more people. Oh, I got killed. Okay, so there's 30 seconds left. Three players remaining. Nobody has spawned in the ground yet, which is good. And let's see who's going to win out of the last three. Okay, so there's two left, and the winner is Magic Man 12. So there we go, we've got some more people in the game now, so let's go and see if it handles well with some more people. Wait for the game to start. 
So six players left. I just killed someone. Four now. So one, two, three, four. Yep. And I'm going to go and kill uh, Groovy over here. So we've got three left now. And hopefully I'll be able to win this one and get the epic victory royale. All right, let's see if we can do it. Can we do it? Oh, we got killed. Okay, so it's pretty good at the moment. Pretty good. I don't see any bugs in the console either. All looks good. So the last thing that we're going to do, we're going to go back into the stats. And we're just going to do in player added character.humanoid dot walk speed equals 16 now walk speed has a capital w and a capital s the reason we're doing this is we're just setting it to the default value because sometimes the player will freeze and i don't think i don't know if this is because of the the, the sword or the walk speed but i think adding this should fix it and also position positioning the spawns above the map should help as well so that is all we need to do now and i think that's the end of this part so that's the end of part three uh, in future parts we'll be learning how to add things like game passes developer products and data saving to the uh, game so make sure you like and subscribe to my youtube channel so you don't miss that uh, this has been how to create a sword fighting game on roblox make sure you turn on the notification bell so you never miss out when i upload a new video and this is alvin blocks i'll see you in the next part